Happy Fire Alarm Friday, everyone, and welcome to System Test 8. So, yes, as you saw in that little teaser there at the beginning of the video and the stuff I've posted on Instagram and the Discord, um, yes, I am officially going to be using Voice Evac for this system test. Um, I'm not sure how long I'm going to keep this setup running, but it is ready to go for today's test, and I'll kind of feature it quite a bit here for this video, so that way I can be sure to give you guys a good representation of everything that we've got. Uh, so to uh, start off the system test here, we've got the Firelight BG-12L, uh, just a basic station, nothing really fancy there. And then up here, our speaker strobe of choice is a Siemens SHP MCS-W. Um, so it's one of the selectable 25 or 70 volt variants up to 2 watts of output. So I've got that. I actually got it brand new. Um, not in its original box, but not used before. So it's a pretty nice speaker strobe and it does have the fire lettering on the side. I also finally got a little blank cover plate for this back box. So now the MIZ doesn't have to be a beauty plate anymore. It can uh, actually sit on the collection shelf. Um, as you can see, this is kind of jerry-rigged a little bit. Um, not the greatest mounting position, um, but this speaker does go pretty deep, so I did have to grab a uh, back box extender ring for this. Otherwise, this wasn't even going to fit in an empty 4-inch back box. So, got a deeper box here, and it seems to be working fine. Moderator alarm is still up here as usual. Um, we're not going to be doing anything with that. I've actually had to disconnect that today, um, so that's not going to be running for anything right now. And I'll show you why here in a little bit. Um, so before we pull the alarm, I think I want to go in the panel and kind of explain everything that we've got going on as far as how this is set up and how we're using Voice Evac on an MS5BD. So let's go ahead and jump over to the panel and we'll take a look. Okay, so we are here at the panel, and as I've stated a billion times in this series and on this channel, this is a Firelight MS5BD3. It's a 5-zone conventional panel with a 3-amp FWR power supply. So nothing terribly special there, just kind of your run-of-the-mill panel uh, manufactured in 2017. Now, what's making this voice system work is actually this little chip right up here on this side. And ignore my watch, I was just getting a notification there. Um, but this is a little uh, multi-trigger circuit board that runs MP3 files based on four different triggers within the board. So this is good to activate on any one of the four triggers down here on the bottom and it'll play um, various mp3 files that are stored locally on this micro SD card so right now I've got a couple hooked up and then I have it wired into two of the relays here on the panel uh, relay one is currently an alarm silenceable relay relay two is currently a supervisory relay and so what'll happen is relay one is wired to trigger one on this board so when relay one goes off and trips that trigger, what it'll do is it'll play sound file 0001.mp3 on repeat. And what I have that set up for is a custom voice evac message that I've assembled together. I've kind of pieced some things together to make it work here. And then relay two is a supervisory relay, which I have wired to trigger two. And on that one, I have the mp3 file 0002 which corresponds to an all clear message. So we'll be using that a little bit later. Um, we'll have to manually trip a supervisory zone to get that to work. Just because I don't have the equipment set up to just kind of use like a key switch or anything like that. Um, and we will have to reset the panel because I don't have the zone set as a temporary supervisory where it only puts the panel in supervisory if that zone is active. Um, so I don't have that set up that way, but yeah. So the way this is wired into the panel is we have the 24 volts resettable power coming in from the panel on these two terminals here. Then on this side is what would technically be considered a NAC. Um, this little chip has an onboard 24 volt uh, 10 watt amplifier. So the speaker strobe is set to 25 volts and I've got it set to the 2 watt maximum. And this little potentiometer here on the side actually controls the volume of that amplifier locally. If you want to, you can also plug into headphones, but for the purposes of the test, um, that won't be necessary. So the speaker itself is wired into this, so this is kind of acting in the capacity of an extra NAC. Um, and then the strobes, of course, are going to be wired into NAC1. 
Uh, NAC2 is not currently being used as that would just be a standard horn circuit. Now what I have noticed about this is that if you're going to be using multiple triggers, you do have to use the common from each relay. So unfortunately, you can't just wire one of the relays commons in and then expect all the relays to be able to activate it. Um, in my case, I had to wire the common from relay 1 and relay 2 in order to use both of them. Otherwise, if I only wired it from 1, then it was only going to go off for that relay. So we've got that there, and then there's a little 32 gigabyte micro SD card, which is way overkill for this project. So, yeah, I can store a lot of audio on it, but 32 gigabytes of MP3 audio is quite a bit. Um, and for a demonstration fire alarm system, it's quite excessive, but it was the only card I could find that was uh, a decent card because Best Buy only had like 256 gigabyte cards available. And this little chip only um, allows for a capacity of 32 gigabytes, so I didn't want to cause any problems with Chinese electronics refusing it. And yes, this is the chip that uh, Aaron Productions featured in one of his videos with a very similar panel as well. So I do take inspiration from his video in getting this setup running. This is a very temporary setup, not at all means, or not by any means, up to code. But yeah, so we're going to go ahead and activate it. The one intriguing thing about this is that um, the drill function does not activate the alarm relays. So you cannot use the drill function on the panel unless the system has already been put into alarm. If the system's already in alarm and you've silenced and you hit drill, you can reactivate the alarm relay. But if the system's not already in alarm, it's not going to trigger. So let's go back over to the pull station and we'll go ahead and activate. Okay, so let's go ahead and give the pull station a pull. And this will be set on a relatively high volume at 110 candela. May I have your attention, please? An emergency has been reported in the building. While this is being verified, please stand by for further instructions. May I have your attention, please? An emergency has been reported in the building. While this is being verified, please stand by for further instructions. It's going to go into some standby music, and this is all just part of the message that I've assembled together. It's excruciatingly smooth jazz, insatiably smooth jazz, irresistibly smooth jazz. Just for you, Robert. Now it's going to go into an eva. By the nearest exit. May I have your attention, please? A fire emergency has been reported in the building. Please leave the building by the nearest exit. Nearest exit would be right up here. And so this is a 520 hertz evac tone. Um, it's a square wave rather than a sine wave, so it's nice and smooth. has been reported in the building. Please leave the building by the nearest exit. May I have your attention, please? A fire emergency has been reported in the building. Please leave the building by the nearest exit. So it's going to keep doing that um, until the message ends, and then it's going to repeat that entire thing, which is the one flaw of the system, um, is that it's going to repeat that message. It'll start back from the beginning, and it will play the hold music. Um, so... Unfortunately, with this little device, I have yet to figure out a way where you can activate a second trigger and transition over to a different MP3 file, MP3 file whilst the other trigger is activated. So if it's in alarm, um, I don't have a way to transition it from a standby to a full evac message unless I stop one trigger and then start the next, which you could do with supervisory in theory and then step up to full alarm but that's like a, a two-stage system that I just don't have set up right now so we've already reset the pull station let's just go ahead and reset from the enunciator and then we're actually gonna go back over to the panel here in a second yeah 
And installing this uh, this chip here has generated a ground fault somewhere in the system, which is why I'm not keeping this permanently. Um, so it's not something that's going to be staying. So let's go back over to the panel, and I will show you the uh, all clear message. Okay, so for the all clear message, it's going to be coordinated with Relay 2, which was the supervisory. Now, in this case, I haven't specifically set anything up, so I'm just going to be reusing the moderator alarm zone, which did trip a supervisory. I'm going to have to do it from the panel here. Now, this is not something I recommend doing. Uh, it's not necessarily the greatest thing to do in the world, so I wouldn't recommend this, but I'm just going to jump the zone here. If I can get a good contact. Manhattan, yeah, attention, please. The building emergency has ended, and all clear has been given. Please resume normal activities. May I have your attention, please? The building emergency has ended, and all clear has been given. Please resume normal activities. And it's May just I going to do this please? ad infinitum. It's not going to has stop. Ended, and all clear has been given. Please? You have to reset it for it to do that, because again, I did not set it up as a temporary supervisory, so if I had something like a key switch or something hooked up to his own, I could certainly do that um, and have that set up for a uh, supervisory message there. But I don't have that set up right now, so it's not designed to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and change the messages a little bit on the SD card here, and we'll see what I've got next. Okay, so we are now on to the next voice evac message. This one is actually a custom voice evac message that Robert from Aslan Fire Safety created. So we'll be demonstrating that one here. Acknowledge that. May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? A fire emergency has been reported in the building. Please proceed to the nearest exit and leave the building. Do not use the elevators. Use stairwells where necessary. May I have your attention, please? May I Got have the your attention, station please? reset here. A fire emergency has been reported in the building. Please proceed to the nearest exit and leave the building. Do not use the elevators. Use stairwells where necessary. It's just going to repeat here. So yeah, there is that message here. So we'll go ahead and reset again. There. And then on to the next message. All right, let's go ahead and do the next tone. Um, this is one I think is going to greatly confuse you. It's not all that common. I haven't seen it used in many voice evac applications, but it should be pretty good. I think you're going to like it here. Yeah. It was just for the lulls certainly is not loud enough to be a Spectre Alert Advance. Go ahead and acknowledge. All right, we'll go ahead and move on to the end of the system test here. All right, and it is now time to finish up the system test with our last message. Here we go. So yeah, that about wraps it up here for this video. Um, it's pretty much all I got here. Um, it was pretty cool getting this project to work and getting everything running, and I'm pretty much just stalling for time at this point, so this will line up really cool in the video. Yeah, we get that pull reset there. And yeah, I don't know how much I'm going to be using the voice evac system, but it's pretty cool. So in any case, thanks for watching, and have a great one. See you later.